Good afternoon, Aegean 600 race fans. I'm Dobbs Davis from Seahorse Magazine. I'm giving you a race analysis for the first 24 hours of this year's inaugural edition of this race. It's a great tour of the Aegean Archipelago, and what we're going to do today is use the yellow brick tracker to tell stories about the race and how the teams are doing out there. If you open to the home page of the website and you click on the yellow brick tracker or YB tracker app, uh, you will get this page that loads. And of course, the speed at which this loads is going to depend on your, your connection. Um, just to explain, there's two ways to look at this. One is the way uh, we are doing right now on the website uh, through the, uh, the browser software version of this app. There is also the uh, iOS or uh, Android version of the app for, for mobile devices. That app uh, will show positions, it will show the course, it will show the leaderboard and other features, but it doesn't show some of the other features that we're going to show on the browser software. Uh, so part of our story today really is, is told best by looking here at the browser software. Uh, so uh, from the home page of the event website, Click on the yellow brick uh, or the YB logo and uh, you'll get to this page. So this is the beginning. Uh, I'm going to close this window for now just so we can see the entirety of the race course and, uh, and what we're looking at. Now, um, just a, a little brief tour of what some of the features are. This is how the page is loading. Uh, I think this is probably a default page. You can scroll uh, and zoom in and out by moving the cursor around. You grab the image and pull it around. Most people are familiar with that. You do that with your mouse. Um, and I think uh, we'll start off with this generalized view uh, at this zoom setting. Uh, 600 miles, 605 miles in fact, is the total course uh, of this race. Yesterday we started uh, a couple of hours before the local time here, which is uh, 15, sorry, 1725, um, and the start was at 1400. So up here off the uh, Temple of Poseidon at uh, Cape Suño uh, was the start of the race. The course went down here to around the island of Milos. Uh, over here into Santorini, they went inside the caldera, around the little island in that caldera, and then they're going to pop back out. Now you can see uh, some have not made it there yet. Uh, we'll tell stories about that and others, of course, the faster boats are, are out uh, on the next leg down here to the island of Kassos. The course then takes them to the northeast around uh, Kassos, Karpathos, Rhodos, and then a hard uh, left turn up around the north end of Rhodos um, across on a straight westerly course, uh, more or less through here, depending on the wind direction, they may be tacking, they may not be fetching. Uh, they go around a little islet here. Um, the names of these places, by the way, come up when you move the cursor uh, over to the waypoints. These are uh, um, are the uh, names of the waypoints that are that are on placed uh, by the software on these islands. So the 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 teams have to honor these and leave these to port or starboard. This is all in the sailing instructions. So they go around here. They go up around Kos. They go close to the Turkish coast. And uh, then up here um, around this little island, and then back west, and then, of course, back to the finish. So the whole circuit is 605 miles. Um, now, what else are we seeing here? We're seeing weather. Now, the weather uh, is interesting. It is a feature that you can get by toggling up here to this uh, icon that looks like a flag. Uh, apologies for those that are watching this and maybe can't see it very well. Uh, this is the best scale we can, we can uh, use for this, but if you follow along closely, you'll see uh, this flag here that looks like a, a pennant, uh, AP pennant, has options. You can do no overlay at all, which just gives you the geography of the course. Um, you can do predict wind, although I think, um, if I remember from looking at this yesterday, yes, predict wind is not loaded uh, in this version. However, the Windy app uh, is loaded. And with the Windy app, it, it's taking uh, weather forecasts from a variety of different websites and, and uh, weather models, sorry. It is from the Windy site, but, it, but they're using different weather models to give predictions of what's happening 
both in the near term and uh, out into the future. So to look, uh, and they code uh, the wind strength and direction in a very clever way. You can uh, perhaps see the, the little uh, graphics of white arrows. These white arrows, of course, are representing vectors of wind and their direction. And then the speed uh, is also replicated or, or depicted in a way that uh, replicates what they, the forecast is saying. So small arrows uh, that are moving slowly indicate uh, light winds, but the other uh, indicator is color. And down at the bottom of the screen here, at the very bottom of this page, you can see um, there's a wind scale. So uh, darker blue is close to zero knots, here where my cursor is. And it, uh, as it gets lighter, it gets to five knots. As you go into green, it gets 10 knots. Uh, darker green and into yellow is 20 knots. From yellow to orange is 30 knots and so forth. Uh, so, as you can see, the race course at this, oh, and then the time for uh, the current time at uh, 1630 Central European time is, is uh, just about now. We uh, are now at 1730 uh, local time in Greece. Uh, and the wind then that's depicted is showing what is the wind speed on the course now according to the weather models. One thing we don't have here is, is real-time actual data. But these weather models are quite good, and of course they're more accurate the closer you are to, uh, to the actual time. And then what you can do with this that's interesting is you can scroll forward, and as you scroll forward, you can see uh, what, what the Windy um, app thinks the weather will be based on the various compiled weather models that are used, uh, and how that's going to change over time. So 6 July, 5.30 in the morning tomorrow, so that would be just about sunrise tomorrow, the weather picture is going to change to look like this. Uh, and you go through forward and you can see it change more. So we're going to use that tool especially in these uh, daily analysis that I plan to do. Um, so let's talk a little bit of now uh, on specifics of the race. If we zoom in to our fleet, uh, each of the teams is depicted with an icon. And uh, we have a fleet of uh, just about 40 boats. It's a little bit less. A couple guys had dropped out. Um, I know there was one team that, that was shown uh, over on one of the islands over here with their tracker. Um, not quite sure why they dropped out, but they did. Uh, and the way to manage how you look at these teams in this software is you can pull out the team app and you can click on the various classes of boats that are racing uh, under handicap or just line honors, meaning uh, boat for boat, who's fastest uh, out on the race course. Now, um, there's uh, three different rating systems being used for this race. There's the MOCRA system that's being used for the two multi-hulls that are racing. Um, one of them is, is this one. And as you click on a, a boat, uh, it will it will highlight if, if you uh, if you click on that boat it'll highlight in white where that boat is on the course and it'll center the map to that position so the smaller um, th this boat Aether is a Daler 31 design um, not quite sure why yeah anyway so th th uh, this is actually in alphabetic order now I understand okay so Aether is a Daler 31 design they're a monohull. Um, they're one of the uh, actually candidates for looking at double-handed uh, Olympic sailing uh, when that was still alive as a concept. Uh, this is one of the strong contenders and it's quite a popular boat type. Uh, but in any case, the, uh, the, the white highlight of that boat comes up. Whenever you click here, the, the, uh, the map centers to that boat's position. Now this one as you can see, a big change in the position of the map because now we're centered on uh, the Orma 60 Trimaran, uh, Akron. Um, now, what's interesting to see amongst the leaders in the race is that this big Orma 60, which normally you'd think would be punched out way ahead of everybody else, is actually behind a monohull. And this is uh, the Italian boat Atalanta 2. Um, this is a FAR 70, um, a FAR 70 that... Uh, is uh, not quite maxi size, but it's uh, quite a fast boat. Um, and on board are some very good sailors, including uh, 
so America's Cup veterans. Uh, so uh, they're actually in these light air conditions, as you can see, everything is blue in blue. So it's been light air for almost the entirety of this race so far. Uh, they're able to be faster than an Orma 60. Look, look on the track of the Orma 60. They've had to sail um, very, very different angles out here because of the, uh, the, the, the nature of how those boats sail. They need the apparent wind forward. They have to sail uh, hotter angles and lighter air, whereas the monohulls sail less distance uh, and have a little bit broader angles. Now, these are jibe angles, not tacking angles, because the wind up the course here, um, while in the beginning of the race, yesterday through this morning, was light air upwind. Uh, basically, these boats were in upwind settings. The breeze shifted to the west, so everybody tacked to get down to their first mark here at Milos. Uh, then uh, the breeze, uh, being from the south, remained in the south. They could go a little faster on a reach and broad reach. But uh, this morning, uh, this was not green. This was still blue. There was uh, many of these boats that are now over here in Santorini were stuck up here last night. Uh, during the day, the wind picked up a little bit. It's actually going pretty well now. I'll show you one other feature uh, of this uh, YB system is uh, when you put the cursor over the icon of the boat, you get information about the boat, uh, its name and its uh, boat type. Uh, and also the speed, the performance of the boat. So here, one of our slower boats in the fleet, it's a, a Hansa 320. Uh, not a particular fast boat, but they are uh, rolling along at 3.8 knots at a heading of 108, uh, 108 degrees. Um, here, Infinity also, uh, this is a German boat, is uh, a Pogo 36. Uh, they too, not a particularly fast boat in light air, but they're going a little bit faster through the water, 5.5 knots. Uh, so anyway, as you can get a, uh, get a feeling for what's happening right now. Now, when I say right now, it's not literally this second or even this minute. This system updates with new positions uh, every 30 minutes. Uh, so uh, everything will refresh in position for 30 minutes. Uh, the system extrapolates the position between those 30 minute skeds. So it's, it's, I would say, reasonably accurate, especially at these relatively uh, low speeds of the race at this point. Now, this is uh, where a lot, of the, a lot of the boats, in fact, a very high concentration of boats right now, this late afternoon uh, in the Aegean, they are coming into the caldera of uh, Santorini. They're going around this island. In here, as you can imagine, it's very light air. Um, we, hit, we were getting some videos earlier through social media uh, of boats transiting through this very, very interesting, and uh, th this is one of the reasons that people do this race, uh, and I'm kind of jealous I'm not out there myself, is the, the scenery at Santorini, of course, is world famous, and the, the white uh, houses up in the village and the hill and the, the shape of this caldera, it's absolutely spectacular. So they're getting an amazing uh, up-close tour uh, of the beauty of this particular Greek island and the others as they go through. But uh, this shows you it's a, you know, even a full day and a little more than a day into the race, you know, everybody's still quite close. And uh, I'm sure it's quite competitive and exciting for everybody here. Uh, how fast are they going? Well, um, the Daler 30 is going 5.4 knots, which isn't super fast, but they are moving along and, and it is a race and, and everybody's trying really hard. Um, like, likewise, uh, little in this Akalaria, this Rodman 42, they're not going very fast, uh, probably VMG, they're going upwind a little bit. The wind strength here is probably more like seven knots, maybe eight knots. And, but then as soon as they get around this corner, uh, they'll be off on a reach initially. Um, so this X41, uh, Alexa, uh, also from Germany is, uh, going 5.4 knots, not Sorry, that's a, uh, yeah, so they are 5.4 knots. Mm, uh, X41 is uh, capable of more than that for sure, so it must be still light air. Um, you look at the angle of Artemis X46, 7.6 knots, it's quite a bit faster. Uh, so for whatever reason, these guys have chosen to soak a little bit below the ley line. Uh, the red line, of course, indicates the shortest Shortest line um, to the uh, next mark of the course. Um, 
But these have been our sort of consistent leaders thus far in the monohulls, amongst the monohulls, um, is this group here. So besides um, our mini maxi down here in the corner, oops, Atalanta, um, we've got a couple of other fast boats, uh, the Scuderia uh, 65. Uh, this is an Italian uh, team that's actually, uh, yeah, I believe it's a mixed Italian-Hungarian team. Not sure, but... Uh, but uh, anyway, they're, they're quite fast, um, and uh, rolling along at 4.1 knots means they're in light air, but they're capable uh, of much higher speeds. If you want to see what happened in the recent past, so you can say, well, hell, they're really slow now, but what happened you know, a few hours before? You can use this scroll bar down here, and you go backwards. Now, you lose the wind, but you can look at what happened in these two. So you can see, for example, here there's a little bit of a match race going on with the FAR 52 one design, a uh, Greek boat called Optimum 3. Um, these guys were fighting hard with uh, Hagar and, uh, you know, I'm sure pushing each other. Um, I don't think we get, yeah, we do. We actually have performance data uh, at this point. And here these guys were going 9.3 knots, 9.2 knots. So this was pretty high speed. This is a high speed, uh, uh, relatively high speed. I mean, these boats are certainly capable of more than that, but uh, that means there was enough wind for these guys to, to be competitive with each other. Downwind VMG sailing at nine knots, that's, that's got to be 12, 14 knots of wind possibly. And, and so they're, they're going along. And uh, uh, if we look what happens here, just a few within the hour, then the the uh, Greek boat decides to jibe to get to the inside. Um, the leaving the tracker tails on. That's another option. You can turn turn these things on on and off to, uh, depending on what you choose to use and the options up here in the menu bar. Uh, but I like to keep them on because it shows the tracks. And uh, these guys decided to jibe away. Why? Well, maybe uh, they look at the weather. They have their forecast. They see a shift coming that's going to shift. Um, from uh, what was probably uh, uh, a westerly direction to more northerly, and therefore they want to get to that shift before these other guys do, and then they jive early. So um, all, all these teams, by the way, you know, they're going to have um, good routing programs, good software, good instrumentation, and then uh, uh, just like um, uh, what we're trying to do here, at looking into the future of the weather, they'll have grid files that they can download and, and input. They know their polars. Uh, so it's it's uh, uh, there's there's a lot of a um, lot of chess game being <laughs> happening here, uh, particularly when it's uh, tricky conditions like this. It's not a straightforward forecast. Uh, there's going to be a lot of changes coming up in the next 24 hours. We'll, we'll roll through some of that here in a moment. So the navigators uh, and and uh, tacticians, the strategists, these guys are uh, are really working hard. Uh, I would say this this part of the race. And even in the beginning of the race, this is uh, going to be very interesting because it's not just navigation, it's anticipating what's next. And of course, the teams themselves sailing the boats, uh, they've got to be at top speed all the time. Uh, sail trimming and changing conditions, this is uh, part of the game of, of ocean racing and, and, uh, and ocean sailing. So, as you can see, uh, the guys that jived early, so remember, these two were together. Uh, the Optimum 3 jived early over into the inside of the course. Did that pay off for them? Here they got lifted, then they jived. How did they come back together? Well, we don't know yet, but you can see by that track they got lifted, so they, they got the shift that they anticipated. They jived on it, but look at the course change here. These guys, by being to the south, um, may have been closer to stronger wind. And so their trade-off was uh, that they could sail faster and, and shorter distance without needing the shift to, to, gain, to gain anything back. In any case, uh, it's, it's interesting tactics, and we can analyze and uh, play these games with this very clever tool. Um, the other group I wanted to point out is this group. These are the boats that are uh, a little smaller in size, but fairly fast for their size. Um, uh, this is a Corel 45, a far design boat from the late 90s, uh, race boat, uh, carbon boat, um, 
Swan 42s, most of those that have been watching this know what they are. That's a, a fairly fast uh, cruiser racer boat. 7.7 uh, .7 knots is not bad. That means probably, I don't know the polars exactly, but I would say 10, 11 knots of wind, maybe. Uh, certainly 10. Um, and uh, I don't know much about this boat, Essex Girl. It's a Russian team, but I've been watching them because uh, uh, they're, they're going very well. They're, they're sailing well. They're sailing fast. Um, when I think of oysters, I think of, uh, you know, nice uh, boats, cruising boats on holidays, but they're pushing this thing. <laughs> so I don't know what the one-off is. It might be turbocharged or something, but going uh, eight knots uh, in an oyster of this size is pretty impressive. Um, the other team I'm, I'm really keeping an eye on uh, are my friends, Swedish friends on Blur. This is a more or less stock uh, J111 um, and uh, from Sweden, Peter Gustafsson. Um, those who uh, follow sailing on the internet will know the Blur blog site of Peter's. It's uh, quite a good site. I urge everybody to go there and, and have a look. Uh, they're always uploading interesting content and uh, interesting insights. Uh, this is a team that actually won their class um, in ORC scoring two years ago at the Middle Sea Race. So um, they, I've talked a lot with them. They're uh, really enthusiastic about this race. It has a lot of similarities to Middle Sea and going around islands and a lot of changing conditions. So they, uh, um, they have some experience. They've come in actually with the same size team, nine, nine sailors on board on a J111, which is more than, than what uh, J111 class one design sailing would, would like. But, but they, uh, they've opted to go with uh, many more teams because they want to be at full speed all the time and have everybody rested and ready. Uh, so they're, uh, they've been doing well in corrected time standings. Um, uh, up here, sorry, this is uh, Pogo 50 uh, from France. Uh, these guys are always in the same neighborhood. Um, and then uh, this boat here is a Swan 65 Spanish boat. Um, very different kind of boat from a very different era, but they too. One, one of the nice things about uh, rating rules, if they're done right, is they can, they can uh, uh, help uh, make fair racing amongst boats that are very different sizes, very different eras uh, and therefore very different speeds. Um, we're not going to talk a lot about rating stuff today, but I think tomorrow we'll talk maybe more about time allowances and how that works on the race course. Um, so let's look ahead then as to what we might anticipate in the next 24 hours. Um, and then just speculate a little bit about what's going to happen. Now, everybody knows about Maltemi. And Meltemi is, of course, the strong northerly breeze that the Aegean is famous for. It's not been uh, very much uh, uh, seen in the beginning part of this race in the first 24 hours. But as we go forward in time, and uh, this would be late tonight, there's not much change. Oh, here we are. In fact, the wind gets a little lighter, maybe a little stronger out here. So the boats that are coming down uh, from Milos, uh, Actually, let me collapse that window so we can see better. So all these guys here, as they get around the corner and into tonight, start to get on this leg. They might see a little bit more pressure because uh, the, the, the shading here is a little more green. Um, and uh, that might give them some opportunity to try to catch up uh, to some of the leaders here because they're still going to be in, in somewhat lighter conditions. And then if we go into about sunrise or so uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, they've got to get ahead and do what they can tonight because you can see tomorrow morning, the leaders are going to be further down the course where there's stronger Meltemi. Um, here, the Meltemi uh, is, is maybe starting, let's say, uh, coming from the north. So it's shifting from the west to the north, but it's pretty light air. And downwind light air sailing is not going to help uh, sorry, these guys will already be ahead. They'll be somewhere down in here, so they, they should be okay. But these guys are want to catch up. They want to do what they can tonight um, before tomorrow morning at dawn because it'll be pretty light up here compared to everybody who's down here. Now, these leading boats, they're going to get around Casos and around uh, Carpathos. And, of course, Carpathos is, is uh, <laughs> very famous for, for lots of wind there. And this channel between Rhodos and Carpathos is uh, famous, infamous, uh, for, for being a place of very strong winds and uh, very rough conditions. Now, um, 18 to 20 knots is fantastic sailing. That's not too rough. I mean, it, 
I've been here over here before and it's blown 40. So this is not uncommon. Uh, so at dawn tomorrow, the big guys are going to start stretching out because they will be in the, in the 18 to 20 knot conditions on a beam reach, very high speed uh, jib reaching uh, over here to the uh, uh, eastern corner of Rhodos at Lindos. They should have pretty good breeze and still they got, until they get into the lee of the island. And in the lee of the island, it starts going light again. Um, so if we look more toward middle of the day or early afternoon, um, we can see it's going to be good high-speed sailing uh, tomorrow for all the boats that can get around Casos, get into Casos through Carpathos and out here into the channel. Fantastic day of sailing tomorrow, I think, for most of the fleet. And then as we get later in the afternoon, uh, maybe even more wind, maybe more, maybe too much wind for some, but this is going to be a, a windy, uh, challenging day for those in here. Um, and if, if it holds, and if it's that windy, then the lee of, of uh, Rhodos may not be that much of a problem, and the, the, the lead boats can punch through here and not get um, too much in, in, the, in the blue conditions of light air tomorrow evening. We can see that it starts to go light over here. Uh, so this is where if it remains green in here and everybody who is back here is able to make it around and through here, they, this is another opportunity um, for the uh, slower boats, the smaller boats, to get caught up to the big boats because tomorrow evening they could be caught in these uh, lighter, lighter air blue. And especially here, this could be upwind in light air and a little bit of tricky sailing, you know, do you go in close to the island, try to find s some land breeze, or do you uh, stay out, uh, possibly get something a little bit more pressure. So it's all about finding the pressure in this, this part of the course for tomorrow evening. Uh, as we go further into the evening and into uh, uh, Wednesday morning, we can see that, uh, yeah, maybe the breeze holds, maybe it uh, remains in a good green color. These, uh, these oranges are uh, where it's going to be 25 knots, and that's, uh, that's quite a bit of wind. Um, most of that, according to this model at this point, um, is, is off the course, but uh, this is more of the typical uh, Meltemi winds, 20 to 25 northeast. Uh, so what happens when the lead boats get the next day um, around the corner and on this next leg of the course? Look at the gradation here from very light, light air to moderate air to quite windy. I mean, this is uh, 30, 30 knots of wind in the middle of the Aegean. A um, little, little far west of the race course, this is the max amount of wind. But, you know, who knows? This is uh, still a predict, uh, prediction that's a day and a half from now. So this could be quite exciting uh, in this leg, in the beginning of the next leg, uh, back up to Kos. Uh, and then, frankly, beyond this point, I'm hesitant to make a lot of predictions because I think, again, the models are evolving and changing. But in general, you can see that uh, the middle Aegean will be pretty windy the next couple of days. Uh, and, and the boats, as they get around, uh, may have lighter air over here um, along the Turkish coast. If the direction remains uh, to the north like this, that's let's say okay because they're not tacking, they're not having to uh, reduce their VMG, but uh, are able to at least fetch the next mark and uh, do the best they can with the sails and, that they have. Uh, some boats have specialty reaching sails that will come into full advantage uh, in these kind of legs. Uh, others will have to, again, struggle with the headsails they have. Uh, so typical, uh, there's uh, in, in ORC we call them headsail set flying. So they're smaller than code zeros. They're uh, reaching sails, reaching headsails, and uh, they could really be uh, uh, become valuable in legs like this. Going around again, it's another fetch uh, to this. And then in tomorrow's broadcast, we'll talk a little bit uh, about what happens up in here. I think our leaders will at this, at this point uh, tomorrow be looking at trying to get up and around costs and navigate this coast. Uh, and, and we may have you know, something different in the weather that we'd anticipate than we show right now. So, uh, if I can do it, I will also bring to you now um, 
a uh, movie video. Let's see. I'm going to try to bring it over in here. And this is from the Blur team. Um, let's see how this loads up. Oh, it's in a different window. I'll bring it across. So the guys on Blur, as I said, they're, they're very clever. They're uh, um, very innovative with, uh, with media tools. And so I think this is from uh, this morning. They were flying a drone um, on their leg down to, um, down to Milos. And so this gives you a little flavor of uh, the sort of sailing they're doing. Um, this looks like maybe an A1. I don't think that's an A2 spinnaker. It's probably too close an angle. Uh, and, uh, and flying staysail. Um, it's not flat water. Look at the, there's a little bit of waves there. Uh, this boat is about 36 feet long and 11.1 .1 meters. And so they, uh, they have the crew deploy. The, the other thing I notice is they're, they've got crew forward. Uh, that's to get the, the back end of the boat out of the water, reduce the wetted surface area in these sort of lightish, lightish conditions. Um, because this boat uh, is a wheel steer rather than a tiller steer, they're, they're stuck with having the helmsman aft in the boat. And the tiller steered version of this boat, you might uh, be positioned further forward. Anyway, so that, that was uh, nice of those guys to uh, share with us that video. Um, I do have, I think, uh, one more. Um, let's see if, uh, wow, this is more of a... Um, more of an artistic shot, but uh, this is nice to just give you a sense of the uh, ambience uh, of sailing on the Aegean. Uh, pretty sure this was probably sunset last night rather than sunrise this morning. Um, but, you know, these are the sorts of things that, that attract everybody to want to wanna come sail this race. And, and uh, so far, while the wind hasn't been uh, totally fantastic in the initial part, it's, it's had its slow moments, it's still uh, uh, beautiful sailing conditions. So uh, that's my show for today. I urge everybody to go to the website. It has a lot of great resources there. Uh, and, uh, um, and if uh, you can get to the social media, we'll have more photos, uh, Instagram, Facebook and so forth will uh, we'll have a lot of resources. Um, and uh, for those watching, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you can join us tomorrow about this time for our uh, second show. Uh, so we're going to say so long for now. From the Aegean 600, I'm Dobbs Davis from Seahorse Magazine.